Like, I had a lot of ideas for different things to build. Sometimes those ideas come out okay, and sometimes they don't go anywhere. And then sometimes I buy the parts for those ideas, and then they don't go anywhere. And one of those ideas was something that I called a digital... Digital sticky notes. And I bought the parts for it, and I never got around to making it. So I figured if I have the parts, I might as well use them for something. So right now what I have is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+, and a, I believe it is a 6-inch e-ink display from Waveshare. And I haven't had a chance to look at this or do anything with it. So what I want to do is I want to open it up. I'm going to connect the two together, and then I want to make something with it, or at least make something useful with it. So with that, if we take a quick look inside, what we got going on here is we have a hat for the Pi, which is why I bought the Pi in the first place, a control board for interfacing between the hat and the Pi and everything else, a bunch of wires, I don't know where they go to. I think this is so that you can skip the hat if you want to. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. And then I believe this is just a power supply USB interface cable because you can in fact attach this to your computer for testing. And then we have a couple of standoffs, most likely for the hat. Inside there whoa, is another box. Come here. And toss that aside for the moment. All right. So this is our screen, I believe. So if I take this piece of foam out, there it is, there's a little guy. So this attaches to all of that and gives me basically a display to work with. Now I was told that this is fragile because it's just glass. So you have to be very, very careful with it. Not like super massively careful, but you know, don't go bending it. It's not a bendable screen. And that is going to be our kit for the, for the day. We have our screen. We don't really need the wires, but we have the interface, the hat, and then our Pi. Now I did take the liberty of already installing uh, Debian, Raspbian, the Linux ARM butts it's on it here, and so I'm not going to go over that. This is set up and ready to go. I just have to get it actually hooked up. And we'll be ready to rock and roll. So let me get all this put together and then we'll move forward with a demo because we can actually demo this on uh, the PC before we even get it hooked up to here. So we'll do that. Okay, now I have everything wired together and it is plugged into the computer. And as you can see in the upper right hand corner, there is a demo that is available here. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can connect everything. Okay, so it looks like we have a panel height, panel width, image, uh, buffer address, waveform, so on and so forth. Okay, with that. A few moments later. Okay, so I was able to crash the program, but I wasn't able to get anything to show up on my device. Not a good sign. Okay, so what I've done is I've attempted to run the PC demo for this particular board, and as you can see in the upper right hand corner, it detects the display, but nothing's showing up on my screen. That makes me a little nervous, because then I worry, is the screen broken, is the board broken, is there something wrong with my connections? Well, I don't know. But the point of anything is to troubleshoot, so the next step is we're just going to hook up the Raspberry Pi 3, I'm going to SSH into it, and then I'm going to try and see if I can get the board to work.
Okay, so after all that, it does appear that we have a few issues. Um, I do have images here that says input exceeds normal display range. Fine, just means that the image might be too big. I saw some images on there that are much larger than this screen can display, even though it can display quite a bit. And then near the end, the biggest problem that I'm seeing is it states start to test frame rate segmentation fault. Segmentation faults make me nervous. In this case, I don't know whether it means the screen segmenting or the file is segmented improperly. It's hard to tell which. So I'm going to have to do a little troubleshooting. And since there's very little reason for me to record that, we're going to go ahead and take a, a short break. And we'll be back when I found what's going on. All right, it took a little bit of time, but as you can see, there is now an image on the screen. And I will explain what I had to do to get that to work. And in fact, it only took me about an hour, but that was a rather long hour when nothing's working for you. So, first of all, the code that WaveShare provides for this particular board and screen does not function. At least it does not function for me. I get a segmentation fault, which is Linux speak for you tried to do something I didn't want you to. It is using C code and it is attempting to register a very specific memory address. I believe Linux on its own as far as I can find, doesn't like when you try to do that, and it literally stops the program dead. Nothing I can do about it. So I went online and there was a gentleman who was kind enough to write a control testing scheme for this particular board, specifically for the six inch screen, which is what I have in Python. And I was able to get it to run and it was sending data to the board as it was supposed to, but nothing was still coming up on the screen. And I will show you what that looks like. That looks like this. And there it is. And so the screen is working. Now, the way I got that to work was by messing with these cables because WaveShare believes that its customers aren't the brightest. And one of the things they will always tell you to do to fix your problems is to check your cables. And what they mean by that is 99% of the time your cables are in upside down. So they say, check your numbers, check where everything's going, so on and so forth. They even put a handy dandy little thing over here that says up and down, meaning that the pins on this one face down, the pins on this one face up. Now I had all that correct, which is fine, but I was missing one very important thing, which is that these two connector types are flip connectors. That means this little black line here and the black line here get flipped up, which loosens the connection and you can slide the cables in and then you press them back down and it locks them in place. This one over here does not use a flip. It uses a slide like a tray. I did not know that. So I had forced, very gently, forced this cable into place and it wasn't making a decent connection. It was in there all the way, it just wasn't making a connection. So I finally pulled the cable out and as I pulled it out, it pulled the tray with it. And that's when I realized what type of connector this was. So I pulled the tray out fully, I put the cable in it, I pushed the tray in and voila, it works. So it's very important when you're troubleshooting things like this to understand that it's not always one thing, it can be multiple things. In this case, I found software that worked because the software I was using did not work, even though it was from the manufacturer, and then it still wasn't working, which means my software error had been fixed, but my hardware error was still a problem, and that was just because of user error, because I didn't realize the type of connectors I was using. But now it is up and running, and because it's up and running and tested and functioning, now we can actually do something with it. So that's going to be our next stages. So we're going to pull up some code and we're going to see how this works. And we're back. And oddly enough, that took a lot longer than I expected it to. My Python skills are not as good as I'd like them to be. So I had to take a test program and then utilize that to make what I wanted. However, I was able to do so. So if I take a quick look here and we run our program, we can see what's going to happen. And there you have it, one ePaper display running a Python script, as well as a Python driver for it. The Python driver was made by Greg D. Mayer, or Meyer, over on GitHub, and I will have a link to his uh, test program, which is what this is running, um, with a few modifications by myself. And uh, this is not the end result of what this is going to be. I actually have already coded what I would want to put on it, but I decided that information might be a little bit too personal for YouTube, so I threw on this little advertising display. There are some more things I want to do with it, of course. I want to make a case for it. Uh, I think I like the idea of the case sitting on my desk rather than hanging on a wall. 
Regardless of where it sits, I'll be able to just SSH into it at any time in order to change whatever's on the display or update the program as necessary. Um, I also like the idea of making the case see-through or possibly some kind of wireframe case because I like the lights, I like the electronics, I just I like how it looks bare bones. It's just it needs more rigidity in order to, to stay safe and to have a place to store it. So that is on my list of things to do. But for the purposes of this, I encourage each and every one of you who is even curious about e-paper displays to go out and pick one up, pick up a Pi, uh, any kind of board, an Arduino, whatever works for you. You can grab a hat like I have here. WaveShare sells all sorts of sizes and shapes and multicolor uh, screens, and any one of them will give you all sorts of information, whether it's a little pop-up screen, a little reminder, daytime calendar, it doesn't matter what. Even a little clock is perfectly functional, but it's always something to work with. It's good technology. It's fun technology. It works really, really well. And so I absolutely encourage everybody to go out and grab one and try to program with it. I learned how to do this in one day with my limited Python skills and a quick internet search. It is not as hard as it looks, I promise. The worst problem I had was the cables, and that was a physical problem rather than a mental one. So super easy to fix. So everyone, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me here. And uh, as always, I encourage you to keep on doing things.